Welcome to episode 54 of the Guitar Builders Basics video podcast. Luthier's tips, tricks, and training from me, Ben Crow, at Crimson Guitars in the UK. Uh, it has been a slight little while since the last podcast. I, I, I'm going to picture the scene. I am about to film a little Luthier's tip um, extraneous video about how to hold sandpaper, can you believe it? Um, Yes, there is something I can show you about holding sandpaper. It's quite crazy. And uh, up on my screen comes the dreaded words, card faulty, insert new card. <laughs> now, I use a 32 gigabyte um, memory card in my camera, and that has to be a special thing, particularly fast enough for shooting high definition video. And I'm thinking, oh my God, what have I done? I've just lost 20 gigabyte of footage of the clarity build. And for a split second, I was about to totally freak out. And then I realized that luckily, I had the day before just cleared the card and entered it off onto the computer. Um, however, I ended up with no spare memory card, with no way of actually filming the podcast, which is supposed to be going out daily. Uh, I now have two... SanDisk, SanDisk Extreme uh, memory cards, and uh, if this happens again, hopefully, I will not lose any footage, but I will be able to just keep on going, there won't be any issues. Uh, but that was scary. Um, anyhow, I am back. It is, it's, it's been a little bit too long, but uh, it's, well, I'm back, so thank you for waiting. <laughs> Anyhow, alrighty. Now, this is a question from CBC Junior 6. He is a guild member, and this was in the forums. He says, My second build is a Telecaster clone with cream colored plastic binding front and back. The binding was really difficult. What do you do to, one, route the binding channel? Uh, he says, I used the Stu Mac jig on my Dremel tool and found it very difficult to control. I ended up with some tear out and some uneven width channel. Uh, I did the best I could shaving the binding and filling the gaps, but man, it was a major task. Um, and two, what is the best way to bind the binding to the guitar? Um, I used Stumax recommended glue and it works, but if it leaks out of the channel and you don't catch it before it dries, you're likely to find it when staining the top. Um, then it's a hassle to deal with. Scrape, sand, cuss, repeat. I like the way you say that. I, I know that process. I know that process intimately. Uh, for the gap fills, I utilized acetone to make the binding goo, which works better. I think next time I'll use acetone exclusively. Thanks in advance for your replies, Chuck. All right, so to route the binding channel, I have got um, no issue with Stu Mac, <laughs> really. Um, their binding jig thing for the Dremel has one huge drawback. It is a beautifully engineered, I think it was actually designed in the UK, it's a beautifully engineered thing, uh, but it's based on the Dremel. And the Dremel, you've got these little um, two mil, three mil router bits, or at least the shaft of the router bit is tiny, and the cutters aren't particularly substantial. Um, it, it is a hobby tool, and that is the thing. For binding, you need a man's router. You have to even if it's just a quarter inch router um, or, or, or an eight mil router, I suppose is the other option. What you need is a cutter and you can see these two I've got here. This is the half inch, this is an eight mil one. Now, the size of this, it's, it's substantial. It is not going to wobble or... Um, your issue with this, with this Tumac uh, router jig was it's so tiny and it wobbled as you were going around, thus giving you uneven width channels. It also, um, it's got this tiny little cutter. It's just not man enough for the task, especially if you're starting to route through hard maple tops and, and the like. Um, it's, it's the definition of a hobbyist machine. Now, even if you go and spend 20 pounds on a cheap, machine that you're only going to use for five minutes of the year, you know, a, a, a small quarter inch router um, will be perfectly 
capable of dealing with this job. And the beauty is they've got a larger base. It's something more substantial to work on and, uh, and you will then be able to put in a real router bit. Um, even if, here we go, even if the router bit has got a, a half inch, um, is half an inch across at the head, that will be substantial enough to cut through most timbers. And then what you need to do is play around with the bearing sizes. So I use a top mounted bearing and I've got many different sizes of bearing so that I can adjust this to match whatever thickness binding I want in the end. And uh, uh, yeah, this is the beautiful one from Radiant Power Tools. It's four flute cutter, stunning. Uh, now they don't have a full, they don't sell a full set of bearings to do routing. However, um, you can find them elsewhere and, uh, and use this. I mean, this is the best cutter I've ever used, ever, um, for this kind of work. Anyhow, so uh, I would say very much so your issue is with the fact that you're trying to use a Dremel, which is, it's a fine finesse, it's a tool for, for fine work. Um, it's definitely not for, for binding, really. Uh, saying that, the very... Uh, when I started, when I was in my garage in student digs, I, uh, I bought a Dremel thinking, oh yeah, Dremel, that'll, that'll do, it's a router, isn't it? And uh, I quickly realised that no, it's not a router, I can't route pickup cavities with it or, or anything like that. Uh, so no, I fell into the same, the same issue. Uh, now you go on to what it is good to glue the binding together with. Um, the Stumax stuff is is nice. It it works. It's very expensive, as is most things from them. Um, and it does a job. I think it's some kind of poly cement um, or acrylic. Uh, I should have done a little bit more research before clicking record. I was just so excited to actually be able to record today. Uh, now you've got. The options that you said, you said you've got the Stumac glue, um, which is fine and it definitely does work. You have got cyanoacrylate or super glue, which works very rapidly and very well. This is what I tend to use most of the time. Uh, now I buy a medium viscosity or a thick viscosity super glue and spooge a line down about eight or 10 inches of, uh, of binding tape it together and we're, we're, you're golden. The trick is to use masking tape on your fingers because you will glue yourself to your guitar. You will, period. So tape up the fingers that you're pressing down the binding with and you, you'll be okay. Um, another option is to use uh, an Airfix model um, or Humbrol here, yeah, Humbrol poly cement. This stuff, it is less uh, effective I think they realized that uh, um, <laughs> it's the gateway drug. Um, little children sitting there making their airfix models with the windows shut and saying, oh, this, this is an interesting feeling. I'm seeing in, yes. Anyhow, um, I digress. So <laughs> health and safety has gone crazy again. And the current crop of glues are much less potent. Uh, saying that, even using this um, poly cement that I've had in my drawer for a long time, um, it's glued a couple of pieces of binder together perfectly fine. Now, in the UK, uh, I haven't ever seen anybody selling acetone. Uh, I know that I can get it, but frankly, I haven't had the time to, to bother, really. Uh, in the States, I know that you can buy acetone and get it fairly regularly in those big box stores you all talk about. Uh, now, acetone actually melts uh, the, the sides of the binding at a micro level, and as such, um, is really good. So, uh, basically paint on some acetone, and uh, over about eight or 10 inches, bind somehow either with masking tape or tape, or even um, wrap around it with, with um, bicycle energy or something like that. And essentially the acetone melts the plastic, you put it together and it re-hardens together. Now the beautiful thing is, it doesn't, if you get it on the guitar top, it will not stain, um, it will not inhibit your stain, sorry, from touching the guitar. In other words, 
it just evaporates into the air. Super glue and other glues can, if you get it on the top, for example, before you're going to put a nice amber stain on or something, if you get it on the top, then it's going to, the stain is not going to take um, when, you, uh, when you go to stain the instrument. Now, personally, I like super glue and it's wonderful, it's fast, apart from the fact that you're going to glue your fingers to things. Uh, however, what you can do is if you're worried about the stain, uh, now I've been slightly distracted, my train of thought is thus. I use thick stuff because it is much less likely to spooge over the place and cause an issue. However, if you are worried about the super glue and the glue spooging onto the top, and then you not being able to stain evenly, uh, what I would do is either stain the guitar first, well, that's what I'd do. I'd stain the guitar before even routing for the binding. Um, no, I lie. Route the binding, find sand, stain the guitar, and then go and do your binding. So stain the guitar and put a finish on, so shellac or just a couple of coats of lacquer or oil or whatever you're going to put over the stain. And then if you do mess up with the glue, it's going to go on top of the couple of coats of shellac or lacquer. And you won't have any issues. The stain underneath will still be an even color. Um, for example, I made a guitar. It was a beautiful Robert Fripp model, um, bright blue. And where the binding, around the binding in a couple of places, the super glue had spooged through because I was using thin stuff. And uh, uh, yeah, the blue stain ended up yellow in those spots and it was, it was just horrible. I didn't know what to do. Uh, this is many years ago now. <sighs> I've been talking faster and faster because I've got a flashing battery sign now. Anyhow, I would say that acetone is probably far and away the best option. As Chuck mentioned, with acetone, if you've got a compatible binding, some bindings aren't compatible with acetone, by the way, then you can drop a little bit of binding in the acetone and make it, basically melt it down so it's really, really squishy. And you can use that to fill any gaps in, your, uh, in the binding or uh, use it as a repair for old instruments as well. And uh, this is the reason why I need to find some acetone somewhere. Uh, lighter fluid might do the trick, but I haven't tried. Uh, anyhow, that's that. Buy a man's router uh, instead of a Dremel and a nice big router cutter. And it doesn't have to be a cutter specifically saying, hey, we're for bind binding. Look at rebate cutters with um, bearing sets. And uh, if necessary, you can buy special bearings to... Um, to bring it small enough for guitar work. This is just a standard rebate cutter um, from Radian Tools. Um, phenomenal router cutters, by the way. And, uh, and experiment with, uh, with glue. Chuck, I would say use the acetone because you have access to it. I use super glue, thick or medium, because it is easy and quick. And if you know what you're doing and are careful not to get it on you or the guitar, it's wonderful. Um, or a poly cement from uh, the hobby airplane model makers should do the job. Uh, it's not as strong as it used to be, but do a test or two before and see which one you prefer. Uh, different brands will have different results, so I suspect it's one of those things you get what you pay for. Um, if you would like to support us financially, please go to the shop and buy some tools. Although, by gum, the Christmas rush has started a little bit early, and uh, uh, yeah, crikey. Um, but hey, if you need some tools, give us a shout. Um, or you can join the Guild as a paid member and have access to other videos that, uh, that aren't up on YouTube, i.e. the Clarity Build series, for example. Uh, thank you very much for your support. Um, I will be back tomorrow. I have spare batteries, I have spare cards, memory cards, and uh, a lot of questions to answer. So, thanks for your support. Thanks for your support. Learn how to talk properly, Ben. Have fun. Goodbye. <laughs>